14 tropical storms, uh, fun lady poisoning 90 people. Yeah. And they see I'm a foreigner and they, they drag me in. It was hard for me to uh, make them be responsible. Uh, that's something uh, you can't expect from everybody. It could be dangerous and you can get food mm -hmm. poisoned. It's one of the most important things if you want to, to do a business over here. Yeah, it was, it was horrible. How about but your mental state after that? Take a big breath in. 10 years later, uh, we are still here. Hello, my name is Olga and I'm staying in Vietnam for a year now. And today we are talking to a restaurant owner in the name who will tell us about his journey over the last 10 years. He started the business here when the name was very different from today and there were no foreign restaurants at all. So how did he start and what challenges did he have? Would he still do it today? Let's get started. My name is uh, Jorge. Uh, I'm uh, from Spain. I'm 38 years old and I live in Da Nang. Uh, I live in Da Nang here with my wife. Uh, she's from Italy and uh, we have uh, a restaurant called Mi Casa with Mediterranean food, Spanish and Italian. We came here 10 years ago with the idea of staying maybe for one year uh, to experience uh, a little bit of uh, Asian culture. 10 years later, uh, we are still here. I'm actually a software developer specialized in web development, but the cooking has been always uh, one of my patients. So that's uh, why we opened Mi Casa. But in the night. We've been uh, traveling uh, in Vietnam uh, for one month uh, to see what place uh, could, be, uh, could be the best spot for, spot for us uh, to stay for a while. We've been uh, from north to south, we've been to, uh, to Hanoi, we've been to uh, Halong Bay, uh, Hue, we passed to Da Nang and we went to the south. And after one month traveling, uh, Da Nang uh, was the best place. It has like uh, an amazing beach over here. The expat community is very nice and the, the people are very friendly. Uh, so we decided to stay in Da Nang. When we first arrived to Da Nang um, on this small restaurant going to the beach, we were having some breakfast and uh, there was the, this lady, she, she wanted to open like uh, another, another restaurant in the nighttime. She offered us to, uh, to work there in the beginning for uh, accommodation and food. And uh, after six months, uh, we decided to open our own restaurant. We were uh, one of the first uh, Western restaurants here in Da Nang. And I think that that's why we were kind of successful. Um, the idea was to open the restaurant only for, for a year. But uh, once we open, uh, we start having customers. People uh, really like our food and the way we do, uh, we do the service and we cook our food. And uh, that's why we decided to stay until now. Well, we mostly have like uh, uh, homemade pasta. We have uh, sourdough flatbread. Uh, we have uh, tapas. We have paella. And sometimes we play a little bit uh, with uh, fusion cuisine. Uh, so we mix uh, some Vietnamese ingredients uh, with uh, Spanish, uh, Spanish recipes and uh, yeah. And your recipes, they're, they're qu quite popular. Like, last time I went, there was like no, no space available. It was like a crowded bar even. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it depends on the night, uh, but uh, with the events we are making and uh, we are well recognized um, among the expat community, it's a very lively place to come and uh, have a beer or have some tapas, you know, a relaxed atmosphere. But what English speaking and the Spanish speaking. Yeah, most, uh, well, of our staff uh, speak English. In the kitchen, they also speak English. If you have any, any kind of um, request to the kitchen, like, for sure, we'll, we'll comply with it. If you want to come to the name and right away know what are the good apartments, where to eat, where are the best bars and trendiest coffee shops, where to rent a bike, get my guide with Google Maps list where you will find already 700 locations all over Vietnam pinned. We stayed in every neighborhood in the name where foreigners are often staying, but don't be overwhelmed that there are so many locations because I made it easy for you. In the guide, there are questions like visa and when is the best time to come, they are covered and I'm also giving you a top five in every category. For example, you will stay at one of the five suggested hotels and then when you're on location, you will just open this map and already you have best locations pinned all around you. I was also thinking, how do I give you extra value with this guide so it doesn't become another PDF file that you downloaded and then just flipped through and didn't get much value out of it. And then it hit me. Uh, the thing that I keep talking about is the most important thing. It's not a thing, it's the people, it's the community. I decided to create a WhatsApp chat and I will be there as well. And I will be answering all your questions about the guide, about Vietnam, about traveling in general. So when you're on location and cannot find something, you will be able to ask me. Another goal of this uh, group will be to find travel buddies and just like-minded people. 
because quite often, for example, on Facebook, the travel communities, they are not always friendly and sometimes they are so big and you cannot really connect there. That's my feeling at least. So I'm trying to create a smaller group where I will be able to answer your questions and hopefully we can connect better. And for example, someone wants to go to Wana Hills and they're asking how to get there. And another person might see it and reply, oh, I'm going there tomorrow. Let's go together, let's split the taxi costs. I'm also pursuing my selfish dream of uh, actually connecting to people because well let's face it when you're older you're not staying in hostels anymore how do you make friends so i hope you will get this guide and i will be waiting for you to share your travel stories in the chat the link to the guide will be in the description and please let me know if you have any questions about it well yeah danang uh, when we first arrived here uh, all the beachfront it was full of uh, seafood restaurant it was the uh, almost everything under construction in the period of uh, maybe three, four years, they start building like hotels all along the beach. And now it's like uh, all uh, three, four, five star hotels along the beach. It's a city full of resorts now. Uh, and definitely we see like way more expats coming to live to the Nang because of uh, the cost of living is pretty cheap. And uh, again, the people are very, very nice. Before coming here, I check a little bit about how the country was working. The GDP was like the second one growing faster after China in this part of Asia. They have one of the lowest poverty rates in, uh, in Southeast Asia. So we thought it would be like a very nice place to come and check. We thought that uh, Vietnam could, um, you know, we could find some opportunities, job opportunities here in, uh, in Vietnam. And it's true, not just job opportunities, but also if you want to, uh, or to start your own business, I think it would be a, a right place to do. Well, we definitely know how to make uh, the food from our own uh, countries, yeah. right? So it's also probably relatively easy to open a business here. 10 years ago, uh, opening a, a business here in Vietnam, 100% uh, foreign owned, it was a bit easier. And now the requirements are a bit um, are a bit higher, but this is still doable. But did, so, did you have to change it because the laws changed? Did you have to? Uh, well, we've been ad adapting uh, the situation uh, according to the law. Basically here, because the land belongs to the government, uh, cannot uh, own land. You can definitely have rental contracts uh, and stuff like that, but uh, the land always belongs to the government. Uh, you can have uh, investments for 50 years or something mm -hmm. like that, but uh, you cannot actually own property. Well, own land okay. in Vietnam. Paying a business in, uh, in, in Vietnam is not, that, is not that complicated, but can also face some challenge. Uh, in staff, for example, at least in, uh, in the food and beverage industry, the rotation of the staff is, uh, is pretty big. But um, the culture is a bit different, the way, the way the people work in, in Europe and the way the people uh, they work here in Vietnam or in Southeast Asia. But uh, it's all about uh, spending enough time with the staff. It depends on the coffee shop. You can find like 10 people working in a place with, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, 10 tables. Mm -hmm. um, but in, um, in Western restaurants, normally the, the salary is a bit higher. But also we expect more uh, from them. We, we need their, them to speak English, to communicate with our customers. And uh, they need to be polite. They need to be obviously involved in the restaurant activities. So yeah, it's not the easiest. And it's a bit challenging sometimes. It is, I guess, uh, really rewarding for locals as well. They get to experience different culture without leaving their home. Definitely, yeah. once they, they get into the mood of uh, how you do the things in, uh, in your place, uh, like um, so the staff they really really like it and you have like a staff working here for two three four years no problem but we'll get some time to get there what would you say for your fellow europeans how much money do they need to stay here for a month well actually uh, vietnam is a relatively uh, cheap country uh, and you can have like all range of prices uh, you can have like a very very cheap street food from around maybe one dollar and a half Two dollars, you can have like a big bowl of pho or like uh, rice with uh, meat or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And you can go definitely to other fancy restaurants where you can spend up to 50, 70 dollars in a restaurant in a night. Accommodation is also relatively, well, it's relatively expensive uh, compared to the, to the average salary here in, uh, in Vietnam. But for a person coming from Europe, uh, it's still pretty cheap. I would say like monthly budget, if you go into the very, very low end, you can spend around between $500 for um, an okay accommodation and okay food, like street food, Vietnamese food. But we're risking a bit of food poisoning. 
Well, yeah, definitely it's better if you know where you are eating uh, because the, um, yeah, the food security in Vietnam is uh, is something to to look for, you know. Mm. I wouldn't recommend you to go to a place that looks empty, you don't know, or because it's very cheap you go there because you never know what are the processes they are using to cook the food or most important, where that food comes from. Because probably the process in the kitchen are okay, but the food, if it has like a very weird... Um, you know, they come from uh, from different batteries. It could be dangerous, and you can get food poisoned. There was like a very big scandal few or few months ago about one lady poisoning ninety people. Yeah, in Hoi They went to the hospital nearby the name. In Hoi An, in Hoi yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's something you should try to avoid, and you should try to go to the most renowned places. Uh, don't be so cheap with the food, guys. You, if you want to spend more on the on the on the higher end, let's say, you can spend up to. $800, $900, and you will live very, very good. Okay. That, that's both including the, uh, the accommodation, food. If you want to party also, you have like very, very cheap places where a beer is like yeah, less than less than a dollar for a beer in a, in a street food place. Or you can go to a fancy restaurant where you can spend more for cocktails, like craft cocktails and stuff like that. But yeah, I would say for $800, $900 a month, like you can live very, very good. Oh, well, yeah. As a single person. For a student. Probably for a couple, something like a thousand and a half. For, yeah, definitely. You wouldn't spend much because uh, most of it goes in uh, in accommodation. For two people, maybe $1,200 uh, could be, yeah, could be doable and you will be very good. That sounds good. I can see everyone just rushing. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually at the meetups, at the Digital Nomad meetups, I meet a lot of Europeans who are just so happy to get out of Europe. <laughs> yeah. To be here. Definitely. Like uh, Danang is uh, one of the top destinations for people working remotely. The, the quality of life is very good, the beach is very nice, uh, you have a lot of activities going on, uh, very nice bars with live music, good expat community. Sometimes we get people also from um, other digital nomad cities like uh, Chiang Mai or Bali. They come to Da Nang for short periods of time. Of time. And then they stay. <laughs> well, and then, yeah, some people, they decide to make this uh, as a permanent base also. In these 10 years, how do you feel uh, locals are treating you? Well, actually, um, I think people here are very nice, feel really integrated in the society many times. For example, yeah, they don't care as much if you are a foreigner or not. Uh, I had a small uh, motorbike uh, accident one day, and then many people came outside to support me and to assist me. They dragged me to, the, to their home, wait for, for my pain to go a little bit, and uh, definitely you feel that people are very, very helpful and, and they care about you. I passed in front of a, of a wedding and they see I'm a foreigner and they, they drag me in, they make me eat, they make me drink, have like a crazy time with them without knowing them from, from anything just from that time. And the people are very, very welcoming. But some other times you find also other difficulties and you see the cultural differences. Um, we've been obviously refurbishing all this, uh, this place, the restaurant we are in. And it's very, it's very difficult to, to deal with, uh, with some construction workers. Uh, there are a lot of uh, communication problems also and um, it's hard it was hard for me to uh, make them be responsible of uh, of the work they were they were conducting been uh, with a uh, with a person that uh, speaks with the and uh, and tells them how you want the things to be done and sometimes uh, that could be challenge and you can see the the cultural differences over there a bit a bit more then during covid also we feel like uh, uh, we had like a big support from our landlord. It's not also if you are friendly with them because I think uh, everybody tries to be friendly when they are starting to do, when you want to get an agreement uh, on property. But uh, yeah, it's also about the other person to, uh, to have a bit more open-minded about what you want to do, what kind of business you want to do. And that, uh, that could be challenging to find a, a nice landlord for you to, to, conduct, to conduct and develop your business. I think it's fundamental and I think it's not as, as easy. We've been very lucky with our landlord, for example, because uh, during COVID, he's been uh, discounting us some rent. Um, he's been uh, giving us some months uh, uh, for free also. And uh, that's something uh, you can't expect from everybody. Yeah. Finding a good one and have a good relationship uh, with your landlord is one of the most important things if you want to, to do a business over here. Some people, they want to be more involved in, uh, in what you are doing, on how you are doing it. But that's not everybody because, again, um, 
having a good relationship normally is pay your rent and don't destroy the place. But yeah, but sometimes that is not enough here. People feel entitled uh, for more of, um, of what they are actually uh, providing to you. What are the major pros and cons for you living here? Well, definitely um, starting a business here is, um, is way more affordable than starting a business in, uh, in Europe. And so for us, that was like the biggest, the biggest thing. Uh, otherwise, uh, we could have stayed in Vietnam or even start a, a restaurant like this in, in Spain, for example. The weather is nice uh, most of the time. Uh, you have late months of summer and then you have like a rainy season, which could be very, very wet <laughs> or it could be a bit drier. I remember, for example, uh, on the COVID year, we had like 14 typhoons. 14? Uh, yeah, 14 tropical storms uh, hitting the night. Yeah, well. And that was, that was, uh, it was a different experience. Yeah. You could see the map, you know, like you have these websites where you can see the, you can track the storms. And you see one storm hitting the night <laughs> and then you see another one forming. So they were kind of queuing and yeah, it was, it was horrible. How was your mental state after that? <laughs> it, uh, I mean, uh, I, I wouldn't say the storms affected affected much, but um, definitely the COVID, uh, the COVID was harder. But yeah, not not every year is like that. Like uh, you have some other years, like they are a bit drier. For example, this year started a bit more wet, but uh, now it's it's quite dry. Temperature is nice, like uh, not so hot. Yeah, we're now like it's the end of December and we don't need any coats or anything. I know it's uh, for me the, this weather is uh, is perfect. If you have to come to Vietnam, for example, and you don't want it to be super, super hot, uh, I would say, uh, no, before September, maybe September is a good month, uh, or maybe March. March would be also like uh, when the rainy season finish, and then it starts like summer kind of thing. You have like one month of a spring where, you know, the weather is very nice and you can enjoy the night way more. Jorge, one advice that you would give for yourself 10 years ago before coming to Vietnam? Should uh, do some uh, breathing, breathing exercises, you know, <laughs> because sometimes the situation uh, can, can become a bit difficult uh, with all these kind of uh, cultural differences you have. So definitely, you know, take a big breath in and realize that actually the situation is... Uh, uh, there are a lot of yogi people here in the name, so... Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. You have uh, many opportunities to learn how to do that. <laughs> But you will be putting that in practice <laughs> when you have to, you know, uh, deal with business over here. Would you still come here if you knew everything you know now? Uh, yeah, 100%. I think uh, Vietnam offers you like the environment for uh, for starting a business that uh, not not other countries uh, they do at the moment, at least in Southeast Asia. Um, again, like countries around, they don't allow 100% for invest companies. You always have to have a local partner. And in Vietnam, if you come with the right purposes and the right uh, money, like uh, you can definitely um, start your own activity. And it's again, it's perfect to uh, it's perfect for that.